Scott Morrison today said any Afghans who arrived in Australia by boat won't be eligible for residency here. The government's stance on Afghan refugees is a worry for many friends and family here in Australia. Michelle Karim's family fled Afghanistan in the mid-1990s before the rise of the Taliban. She's a criminal lawyer advocating on refugees' behalf and she joins me now. Thanks for your company. Thank you so much for having me. Michelle Grimm, what do you make of this uh, latest position from the Australian government? Yeah. It's been quite a confronting and deeply distressing few days, particularly for Afghani people who have had to relive insecurity and extremely traumatic experiences. Um, as you've just indicated, a short time ago, we had an official press conference by Prime Minister Scott Morrison announcing that our government will not be offering permanent residency to those Afghans who came by boat and are in Australia on temporary visas. Um, this is simply inhumane and reprehensible. Scott Morrison says that Afghans need to use existing processes for coming to Australia. Uh, they are, these are extremely extraordinary circumstances which need a specialised response. Uh, humanitarian visas um, have not been used since the commencement of the COVID pandemic and uh, we're pressing for uh, a specialised introduction or change um, to the implementation of those visas. Though that change, what exactly is it that you're after? I accept that we need to acknowledge the need to follow lawful processes for humanitarian visas, but we cannot rely on those existing processes and lengthy timeframes. People need to get out now. We all have seen the terrifying images from Kabul airport not to mention the hundreds of thousands of Afghans who have been allies to the West for two decades. What happens to them, their spouses, their extended family, their children? They deserve a better, swifter response, not warnings from Scott Morrison's government. Um, might I add, it's just, it's just simply too late. We need action. Uh, the next few days are pivotal and immediate action is needed. Australia is, is too behind um, and we need to follow other countries such as Canada. And, and when you talk about Canada, that's increasing uh, their intake of refugees to 20,000 uh, specifically, I think it's tethered to Afghanistan. In terms of reacting swiftly right now, what does the Australian government need to do? Well, last night, um, perhaps, I can indicate that I was invited to participate in an emergency meeting on the Afghanistan crisis. There was a presence from the Labor Party offering their unconditional support. Um, might I mention that not one Liberal member was present. However, um, there was a significant presence of Australian community, uh, of the Australian Afghan community. Um, there are a number of recommendations that came out of that meeting. Um, firstly, um, that we play a role in this terrible betrayal of the Afghani people. Um, we need to step up our efforts, requesting the Australian government to immediately start a special humanitarian visa program, just like they did for Syria a few years ago. And, and just as we've mentioned, Canada announced recently to bring in 20,000 Afghanis through a new visa program. Um, we need to immediately step up our humanitarian aid and assistance to Afghanistan in the wake of the current situation and the mass number of internally displaced people and fears of famine and hunger. Um, and we need to work with the international community to undertake immediate and preventative action to prevent the slaughter of civilians and protect the rights of women and girls um, and our most vulnerable um, in the community. Michelle, Karim, when you, you say uh, that terrible betrayal, are you speaking there about how swift uh, the exit by the coalition forces, including Australia, was from Afghanistan? It's disgraceful. It's exactly, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, we knew that there was a possibility um, that the Taliban would take over. As small as that possibility may have been, um, our response, uh, our response um, was ill-prepared. Um, the calls for assistance were there months ago from the Australian Defence Force, from military experts, from our, from our veterans. Questions have to be raised about our response. And in fact, just earlier this week, I was speaking to the former chief of the army uh, for a big stretch of the Afghanistan war, who was saying that it was simply the responsibility of Australia to react and saying that there seemed to be a lack of strategy here around thinking about the big picture of this exit. It sounds uh, as though you're in furious agreement there. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, it's really difficult to fathom 
how we're in this position. Um, it's a sad time. It's, un it's unbearable hum inhumanity, a heartless betrayal of in imaginable proportions. Um, and I can't even understand how the Afghani people must be feeling. The Taliban have said that they're going to treat uh, women better this time around. Do you take any comfort from their words? Absolutely not. They've issued a number of statements in recent days, including pledging an amnesty for those who've worked for the previous government and also pledging to be inclusive. Um, they've said women can work and girls can go to school within their parameters. The Taliban needs to honour these statements. Until then, the Taliban's misinformation and disinformation campaign needs to stop. It needs to cease. This isn't a legitimate government. This isn't a legitimate takeover. There have been chilling reports of human right abuses and of restrictions on the rights of individuals, even coming out today. Um, there is mounting violations against women and girls and our most vulnerable. I'm deeply concerned um, about their campaigns and their propaganda. Mm. And I'm hearing also reports from journalists there, some of which are friends saying that they're going into lockdown to try and protect themselves and their families. There seems to be a sense that the Taliban is going to target journalists and will push journalists out of the country in order to shield what might happen from here on out. Is that a sense that you get? I think we can. I think we can learn from experience from Syria, from Iraq that that's exactly what's going to happen. There would be many Australians who are watching and, and hearing your heartfelt plea to the government today, Michelle Karim, wondering: Is there anything that they can do? So, is there? Um, there is. Well, the the question bears what we can do to support um, our Afghan community. Um, if they email info at afghanistancrisishubinfo.org and if I can spell that it's um, A-F-G-H-A-N-I-S-T-A-N-C-R-I-S-I-S-H-U-B-I-N-F-O.org there is a team of dedicated volunteer volunteers that are setting up a centralised URL to assist in offering our support or, or how we can simply support we, we all, we all um, feel quite hopeless at the moment or helpless I withdraw that helpless. How do you feel when you, you hear the comment or the question asked, as it has been in the last couple of days, of whether the Afghanistan war was worth it? I know lots of veterans have been asking the same question, reflecting on the 41 Australians who lost their lives there. I think it reflects our arrogance. Yeah. The West's arrogance. There's a lot, it's a very complex history um, that that predates the 1980s. Um, they were a pawn in the war. Afghanistan was a pawn in the war between the Soviet Union and the United States. Yeah. We, we, we deserve it to clean up that mess. It's certainly harrowing. Thank you so much, Michelle Karim, for joining me this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me.